Hey, it's so good to see everyone. You know what? I'm excited every time. Seriously, I, cons I love my life, by the way. I just consider it a, such a privilege to worship together, to just see the things God's doing in each of us. And I look forward to this. You know, there's some people, I was thinking about this, and uh, here I go, right? All right. <laughs> So easy for me to take up time. Sometimes I say, why am I taking, why are my messages so long? Oh, because of this. But anyway, real quick, I, I just thought it was real important because I think it's such an awesome joy to be able to do this. And I know there's some people who are happy when something happens. Maybe we have a snow day or maybe the electric's out or whatever or something happens that causes us, oh, not to go to church. I understand sometimes we're tired, but I really do look forward to what we just got to do together. Yeah. I love worshiping and looking out and seeing you worshiping and, and knowing that we're getting to love and hug on God at the same time. There's something very awesome and exciting about it for me. And so I count it a privilege. I know Ivy does too. Sit, let me cut my mic. Wow. <laughs> Talk about getting the hook. <laughs> so listen, so that I can move on and because I know time will get away from us. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to pray. We're going to get rolling, and uh, I'll do a quick recap just to summarize. And then w there was three other things I wanted to touch on, which Ivy's going to help me with, uh, because um, I just appreciate the wisdom, the insight, and everything God does in Ivy. Um, she is a blessing and definitely a help. No, I'm not saying anything crazy, honey. It's funny, sometimes you hear, the whole, I got the Holy Spirit in my ear, but I also have that beautiful voice of my wife saying, don't do anything crazy. So let's pray real quick. Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for uh, just being Lord and sovereign King in our lives. You are aware of everything that we will approach, everything we'll deal with. Nothing takes you by surprise, even though it may take us by surprise. You are Lord and you are in control. And we thank you. We give this time to you. Speak what you want to speak to your people. Anything that's of Otis and Ivy that is not significant or anything that advances the kingdom, let it fall to the ground and them not remember it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, just a real re a quick recap. Uh, talking about the character of a faithful servant. And we went through some of those issues. A lot of times... When we're going through life and we want to be successful, everybody wants to be successful. I've never met anybody who said, I don't really want to succeed. So that's never an issue. But the, the issue at times is we wonder why we're not succeeding, why we're not uh, reaching full potential and having the type of success that uh, we believe God wants us to have. A lot of times I think that's connected to things that we're allowing to short circuit all the talent, all the giftings that he's given us, all the skills that we've learned. Sometimes it comes down to our character. And faithful servants are those who are going to be good stewards and try to uh, uh, exemplify the character of God. And so that's the issue that we want to deal with and you just being you and who God's created you to be. So. I had talked before, and I won't go through all, the, uh, all of this information, but one of the things I did mention, it was a quote that I liked from Abraham Lincoln that said, reputation is the shadow and character is the tree. So again, reputation is a shadow. Your character is who you really are. Character is the, character is the substance, the main thing, but people get to see the reflection or the shadow that you cast. And so that's your reputation, right? I hope we all have a good reputation. That's our goal. A couple of things that we talked about was in forgiveness. You know, it's very important that we have the forgiveness of God. The biggest thing we can consider is that God forgave us all of something. That keeps me from being a judge of people. Now, don't get me wrong. There's, God expects us to make good, sound judgment. He, he, he expects us to call foul <laughs> or right and wrong. That's okay. But I'm not supposed to judge people. I'm not supposed to hold people in unforgiveness because really what happens is it short circuits everything God has for us. If there's a, a demonic force that won't leave you alone and you keep wondering why you can't get beyond it, check forgiveness. <laughs> 
Who are you holding in unforgiveness? Seriously, it clogs up the gifts of God and the things God has for you. So that's one of the things we talked about. And like I said, I'm not going to go back into all that. We talked about self-control. Self-control is so important because uh, there's a lot of things that we, we work on and we try to develop, but yet we don't show the self-control to not react to what's happening opposed to just listening to God and being people of action. When, you're not, when you don't have control, your self-control, you just respond to things. And how easy is it for the devil to get you to fall into the wrong trap? You know, uh, he sets you up. I think of Joseph, Joseph, a mighty man of God, he, and, and here uh, his master's wife was trying to get him to do things that he shouldn't be doing with her, but Joseph had self-control. He did not fall into that trap. He did not allow himself to give in to those temptations in his flesh. And a lot of times we got to do the same thing. You want to jump in, babe? Yes, because I think an important element of self-control is not telling the enemy what your buttons are. Yeah, how many times do we say, child, I tell you, if she do that one more time. One more again. <laughs> one more again. Or if we say, if you say, you know what, I, I tell you, that, that just really gets under my skin. Don't tell the enemy where to get under your skin. Don't, don't reveal those things about yourself. Take authority over that thing so that you can, so that it doesn't get under your skin. So you don't have to say, if she does that one more time, or if he does that one more time. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, self-control is very important. We don't want to fall. Another thing I talked about was fairness. And uh, I talked about the issue of, the thing about being fair, and I kind of tried to uh, equate it with just uh, doing unto others as you would have them do to you, and thinking beyond your own issues. So, I talked about, uh, uh, you know, fairness will cause you to go beyond where you're at and try to consider the other, to see what is it that they need, what, what's the best, uh, that can, best and just thing that we should be doing so that we can have the better outcomes, uh, amen? And so fairness is very important uh, in that. So we talked about those things, and so now we come to a point. I think we should say that. Go on and say it. Um, another issue, another thing or tenet of fairness is that fairness is not based upon whether you feel the person deserves it or not, okay? It is not our job to determine people's worthiness, mm -hmm. amen? It's, that's not our job. What we want done to and for us, we must do to and for others. That's what fairness is, amen? So let's not, let's not be judgy. Let's not be legalistic. Let's just think about, okay, what does that person need? Amen? Because, look, we are all living under God's unmerited favor. Amen. That's what Amen. grace is. We don't deserve his grace, but he gives it to us anyway. Can we say hallelujah? Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. he gives it to us anyway. Look, we all know what we did yesterday and what we said and what we was thinking. We need to quit clowning. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, be, let's be fair. Let's be yeah. fair because we ain't all right all the time. Yeah. You know, and actually, Ivy, you said that, and it makes me think also, it's, 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 sometimes, you know, just as you were saying that, God just put this on my heart to say this to you. When God moves on your heart to give, whatever it is, financially, materials, time, when you're being obedient to God, just be obedient to God and not worry about what the person's doing with it. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying we should be stupid. Okay, there's sometimes I've learned in times past, I can't just give that certain person cash. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I remember one time, well, well, yeah, I won't go into too much detail. But anyway, I remember I was talking to my dad and I, I went home. They said, did you give so-and-so cash? I went home to visit. They said, did you give that person cash? I said, yeah. Oh, Junior. Oh, they're just going to go get drugs. I didn't know what was going on at home. And I gave cash. So with that knowledge now, I know not to give cash. But what I do want to release us from is that a lot of times what Ivy's talking about is are they worthy of it? Was there a cause for it? Was it right for them? When I hear God say give somebody 20 bucks or give somebody $100, 
or like I've told you before, God told me to give my keyboard away. I didn't say, are they worthy? So just to let you off the hook, when God tells you to give, give. And even if that person uses it in the wrong way, you still get a reward because you were obedient to God. That's now right. he'll deal with them. That's okay? right. Okay. So be free. That's be right. free. Amen. You don't Amen. have to go and inspect the, what people are doing. If you really heard from God. Now, if it's just you being loving and uh, well, let me see. If it's self-prompted, okay, fine. You can check that a little bit more and make sure you're sowing good because the Bible does tell us to sow well. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to sow into good soil. That's okay. But when I hear God say, Otis, do, I'm going to do it. Yep. Okay? And he, <laughs> he does that a lot. <laughs> he does that a lot. He'll just say, hey, um, well, I don't know, we'll just be driving up somewhere. And he'll say, um, I want you to give them $50. And I've learned after, how many years have we been married? Oh, my goodness. I 28, girl. I forget. He's, <laughs> when it comes to that kind of stuff, he's the girl. I'm the boy. How dare she? Um, I just don't remember. I'm offended. Well, I no. don't even remember how old I am. But um, he'll, he'll just say, give that person $50. And I've learned over the years that I just don't question it. I just don't question that anymore. Back in the day, way earlier in our marriage, I'd be like, well, what? Who, do you know who they are? Do you know what they're going to do? Uh, where do they live? Who are their people? Those are the types of things I used to ask before. And, and I, have, I have a confidence and I trust, his, I trust his Holy Ghost ear. And so when he says, I want to do such and such, I'm just like, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now I've gotten to the point where I'll say, hey, or, or I'll say, hey, I want to give so-and-so such and such. And he'll say, okay. And, and I'll say, what amount do you want to give? And he'll say an amount and then I double it. <laughs> We're still I, going through counseling on that piece. <laughs> I just think it's so fun. <laughs> I do. I think it's, look, well, because I just, I just want people, for me, I just don't want people to be stressed. And if I could give you $50 so that you could fill your tank for that week, it's like, yay, that person's going to have a good week. And that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. That makes me happy. Amen. God loves so, a cheerful giver. Yeah, Amen. To, yeah, he does. It's, I mean, that's how we get to be God's hands and feet in the earth. So it's a good thing. And I love this thing, too. I'm telling you, people, I, I've, seriously, we've had people walk out of here because we asked for an offering. Yeah. Or asked for a tithe. Yeah, I don't get that. And people don't understand the principle, but I'm going to tell you, if they really got that principle, yeah. if God can trust you to be a conduit for him to feed and take care of his people, and by when I say pe his people, they might not even be saved, but I mean people. Mm -hmm. He's working on them, okay, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if he can trust you to be a conduit, you're always going to have a full supply yeah. Just flowing through. Hallelujah. Some of it, he says, you can use that for that. You can use it. Uh, in other parts, he says, just keep it flowing. And I'm telling you, if you, if you just saw what we, you, what our income when we first got married <laughs> compared to what our income is now, yeah. I know it's because we've been obedient and yes. God is a, a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Yes. He's a good God. Yes, he Amen. Is. Can somebody agree with that and have some? I mean, Amen. I know you got some testimonies out Amen. there. Amen. Amen. I know you have testimonies. Amen. God's going to even keep giving to, uh, to Bethel because he, uh, they know Bethel is a good steward yeah. of the funds. That's right. We don't waste the money. That's right. We do what God tells us to do. Amen. All right. So Amen. anyway, I got off. No, no, that was good. That was very good. And we're very much on task. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, another uh, element of having godly character, the character of a faithful servant, is confidence. Confidence. Confidence helps us to rely on the Lord for all things in our life. How much is in all? All. Everything. The exclusion okay? of none. The exclusion <laughs> of none. So confidence helps us to rely on the Lord for all things in our life. Confidence enables us to push forward in the direction that we are called because Jesus is in control. It's not, this is not about self-esteem. Don't get me wrong. Self-esteem is a good thing. We should all have a good self-esteem. But as believers and Christians, our self-esteem should be rooted in Jesus. Our mm -hmm. self-esteem should be rooted in the word and what, and what the word says about us. What does God say about us? That's where our confidence comes from. I get emotional because I think about, we sang this morning about God being the great I am. Yes. The mountains shake before him. And all of those things are absolutely true. He has done all of those things. And even in all that wonderfulness, he gives me confidence to live my life and to live well. 
He's yes. not too busy to build you up. Right. He's not too busy to build me up. So let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. Oh, my God. I just, I'm just pushing buttons. That's what I like about my phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. And this is the story of David and Goliath. And I, we all know this story, but sometimes we sum it up. So I think it's good to go through it again. So I'm going to start reading at verse 23. Then, as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words. So David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. It shall be that that man who kills him, the king will enri enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. That look, that's awesome. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So it shall be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his older bro oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left these few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these, and these people answered him as the first ones did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. And then David said to Saul, let no man's heart servant will go and fight with this Philistine. David, being young, he was young. Everybody else around him was older. They probably had families. They were more established. David didn't care because he knew the word. He said, how dare this person come and defy Israel? Mm -hmm. Do you know who we are? That's basically what he was saying. You don't know who we, he, did, he didn't know who we are. And that's the reason why he could get up and say all the things that he was saying. And David said, no, we're not going to have that. He is not going to defy the living God. And so David was confident that anything that stood against God would lose. He was confident about that. So confidence, again, propels us into doing what God has called us to do. David knew that a reward was being offered. But honestly, I think David knew about that offering. But David, I think David got his back up. Y'all know what I mean when I say that? He heard that he heard that man talking, and he was just like, I don't know who this person think he is. Who did he think he is? Right. And I don't know. He may have had a little neck roll with that, too. <laughs> he may have just been like, well, I don't know what you're doing. And so he just, he just, he was confident in what God said about the people of Israel. And so he did what he knew how to do. Saul tried to dress him in the armor and David was like, nope, this doesn't work for me. And he went out and got what he always would use to, to defeat the enemy, a lion, a bear. He got what he always used. He got those five stones and he threw them and he killed Goliath. That's, That's right. confidence. That's right. That's not looking to the right or to the left and being deterred by what is around you. When you're confident in Holy Spirit, when you're confident in Jesus, nothing can stand against you. Let's go to John chapter 15. John. John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my com commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. 
No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. So um, why can we have confidence? We can have confidence in Jesus because he calls us a friend. Amen. He tells us secrets. Mm -hmm. The conversations that he has with the Father, he has with us. That's right. When he left this, wor when he left this earth after dying on the cross, hallelujah, he, the Holy Spirit came. They did, the Father and Jesus did not leave us alone. They left us another part of themselves, which is Holy Spirit. And he is always with us. That is, that is where our confidence should lie. Um, I'm not sure. If, are you guys familiar with the Passion Version of the Bible? It's really lovely. And in the Passion Version of the Bible, it says in verse... 12. It says, so this is my command. Love each other deeply as much as I have loved you. For the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for his friends. You show that you are my intimate friends when you obey all that I command you. I have never called you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. And a servant don't all, doesn't always understand what the master is doing. But I call you my most intimate friends. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. For I reveal to you everything that I've heard from my father. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't choose me, but I've chosen and commissioned you to go into the world and to bear fruit. And your fruit will last. Because whatever, whatever you ask of my father for my sake, he will give it to you. This is my parting command. Love one another deeply. So we are friends of God. Let's have confidence in that. Try to do everything all by ourselves within our own power because our power ain't nothing. That's right. It ain't a, it's a whole lot of nothing. So let's, let's have confidence in Holy Spirit. Let's move out. Thing. Let's, uh, all of our actions, the way we feel, our thoughts, they should all rest in Holy Spirit and what Jesus says about us. And I, I'm staying on this for a while because um, in this area, there's a principality. Mm -hmm. There's a principality over this area of poverty. We come against that in the name of Jesus, and it will be defeated. Hallelujah. Amen. It will be defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And That's so right. one, of the, one of the tenets of poverty is, is a, a, just a lack of confidence, not feeling as though we deserve certain things or not feeling as though that we are smart enough to have certain things. No, 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 no. Jesus calls us a friend. He tells us God's secrets. <laughs> Do you get that? The conversations that Jesus and, and the Father have, we get to be a part of. There's no need to have a low self-esteem because we are friends of God. Amen? That's right. Amen. So we are confident. We can do all things through Christ yes. who strengthens us. Yes. Amen? Amen? All Amen. things. Hallelujah. Mm, that's good. Hallelujah. You know, and I'm happy she said something there about the confidence. Um, you know, I thought of several examples. Um, you know, I remember years ago, my credit wasn't what it should be. And I remember I had a car that was given to us. It was our first car together. Because <laughs> I had some, my, my, I had one, this one car that was just, I'd be laugh because I lay hands on it and it would, would come back to life in the it, name of Jesus. But no, no, Pharrell. <laughs> Pharrell, he would lay hands on that car and it would come hey, back. Hey, seriously, that bad boy stopped on us on a date in Columbus. Yep. And I, I, she thought I was crazy, but I prayed over that bad boy. Yep. But anyway, that car finally died and my mother-in-law gave me a vehicle. And so that was cool. No, no, no. Can I tell him why mom gave <laughs> Okay, can I tell him? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. My, mom, my mom gave us this car because she thought it was complete lunacy that we would be on the side of the road and he would be laying hands on a car. So she gave us a car because she thought that that was insane. But now, <laughs> but now you know, she knows that we're, we're, we're people because, look, we grew up in the Baptist church and you just didn't do that. 
<laughs> people, that was weird. Uh, and so my mom was like, y'all ain't going to be sitting on the side of the road praying. Just take this car. Yep. So she blessed us. So I was yes. fortunate. I didn't need credit to get that car from her. Mm -hmm. And I was, a well, maybe 22. But anyway, uh, and so, you know, uh, I had some mishaps and stuff. But I remember a time going to, because that car died, that was given to us as well. And so finally, I, we had to buy a vehicle. And I had to do some financing. And there was so much trepidation when I filled out that application and trying to wait for the banks. And my mindset was, oh, please say yes. Oh, please say yes. I need that. But, you know, over the years, uh, well, we got that. And we were faithful. And we handled our, we were good stewards over, over things. And so it's funny, that's, that type of mindset is so far removed from me that when I go and get pre-approval at the credit union, they're trying to give me way more than I want. And there's like, you can go up to this amount. I said, I will never buy a car for that much, you know? And, but the difference is the confidence level has shifted. Yeah. Now it's more so of, oh, this is a done deal. Hey, babe, I'll come home tonight with whatever it is. Now, I only say that so I can build you in your confidence in the say that those areas where in times past, maybe the devil's been able to whoop us up on a certain area, or uh, I don't care what it is, whatever it is that we struggle against, or maybe we fly off the handle, or we say something out of our mouths too quick, whatever those areas are that in times past, you kind of anticipate, even if it's a, a teacher about to hand you your report back, and you're kind of like, oh, here we go again. <gasps> I got an A plus. It's the surprise. But really... When we flip that and we do the work that's necessary, we spend the time and, and get into God and say, even in our schoolwork, even in our, our finances, even in the way we raise our children, whatever it is, everything, if we stop and say, God, I can't do this. I cannot be successful in this without you. And when we silence ourselves, get before him and say, help me. And he starts helping us, and it, it's almost like he just poofs, tools start put. He yeah. puts everything on you that yes. you need. He Hallelujah. teaches you stuff, Hallelujah. and it's like wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you start looking, and when you go to do something, you're already like David. This dang Philistine! I'm gonna cut this thing's head off. Right. And he told him, Yeah, I'm yes. gonna cut your head off That's today. That's right. That's right. He's looking at this giant. So the situation changes from us feeling like we don't deserve. Now, I'm going to tell you something. God told me to tell you while Ivy was talking uh, because he he's, has said this to me in other ways. I always look for my weaknesses and I drive into them. But God said, steer, tell them to steer in to the hard thing. Mm -hmm. Steer in to the hard thing. Because a lot of times, just like the ruts on the road, you take your hands off the wheel, the car will self-correct based on the ruts in the road, and it's going to follow that common path, right? But God is saying to us, if we want to gain confidence in those areas where we're unsure, you got to intentionally steer into the difficult yeah. part. Yeah. And that's contrary to us because we don't want to be difficult. We don't want to deal with the thing that's hard. We don't want to have to tell that family member that they shouldn't be doing uh, whatever, shouldn't have an abortion. Or we don't want to tell them they shouldn't be shacking up with so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Or we don't want to tell them they shouldn't be cussing out their children like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because you might lose a friend. Mm -hmm. They might not invite you back for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. But God is saying those things that we need to develop steer into the difficult place. I know I need to move on, right? <laughs> Okay, so, and, and remember, the end goal is that we are confident in who we are. I can't even go on, actually. I can't go on yet I because I missed one hard. piece. It's hard. I remember Joy's not here right now, but she had asked me really last week. She said, what is your message going to be? And I started, I was, did have a different message for you, but it was called Stop Dipping. You know how we dip into everybody else's business? Well, God started telling me, I have to develop that for another time. But God, this confidence piece does come, uh, have some of that in there. In the fact that you will never be confident as long as you're trying to wear some well, someone else's talent 
or gifting or calling. And a lot of times, we won't just simply embrace what is that thing God created me for that brings me so much joy. When I do it, there's, it's like all the connections were made. You know, there's, there's no area where it's short-circuited. It's like when I'm doing what I was created to do, I can't even sleep after it because I am so jazzed and so fulfilled with what God has done. I want to do it more. But a lot of times what we do is we go and look at what somebody else is doing. We might look at pastors and say, oh, I sure would love to be the pastor. Not know all the baggage that comes with it. Not know the way you're mistreated at times. Not at Bethel, you love on your pastors, and that's cool. But listen, being a pastor is tough. But sometimes it looks like, oh, they just get to stand up. And look, people bringing baked goods and all kinds of whatever. But the truth is... If you try to step outside of what you're supposed to do and step into what is another man's and say, this is where I want to be, that's dipping. And God told me, I will not provide when you're dipping because I didn't call you to that. I gave you resources to do what I called you to do, and it's over here. So if you find yourself not confident about the things you're doing in life, if you find yourself saying, man, is this thing really working? It feels like something's not connected. The outlet's not working or something. Well, you're not linked into your power because you're outside of your purpose. Confidence comes when you know you're hooked up to the right thing. And that's the thing about David there. David had already practiced. He already slaying bears and uh, lions. He had already practiced with his slingshot. He already knew what he was doing. He had great confidence, and he knew he was on God's side. All right, so I got to move on now. But just keep that in mind. Please steer into the difficult, steer into the hard thing. Uh, as Pastor Forte would say, if you're... If you're not running into devils, you're running with them. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right, so the next thing is obedience. It is very important, and I know I'm preaching to the choir, so this is a refresher for all of us, right? Obedience is so important. You know, uh, it requires that we submit to God. In order to be obedient, you know, we got to recognize the authority that God has and recognize the, now understand it's easy to say, I'm going to follow God. So God's here and we say authority, but the truth of the matter is structure is very important. So like the state of Ohio, uh, let's say uh, someone's a trooper. Now I can say the sovereign state of Ohio, that's the authority. But at the same time, sometimes we miss it because we see a trooper and we don't recognize that trooper is that authority, right? Mm -hmm. That trooper is the authority of the state of Ohio. The same way we might not recognize maybe an usher here as being a part of the leadership or the authority. You would say, hey, I came to submit to Pastor Rob. He's my my, uh, spiritual head here. That's the authority I submit to. Okay, well, he put people in place. He put people in place. So that, too, is a part of the authority. So here, God looks at us, and he says, do we understand order? Do we understand obedience to the things that he has for us to do? We do know that the word tells us it's better to uh, uh, be obedient than to sacrifice. See, obedience gets to be on your terms to some degree because you determine, yes, I'm going to obey. Sometimes when you don't obey things, God's going to take stuff away. Yes. He lets stuff fall on it. Yes. <laughs> that pretty car or whatever it is, or whatever it is you think, that beautiful career. I'm telling you, any time that I get overly confident in my gifting, God snatches it from me. Just to remind me who's, who's moving. If I ever get overly confident, I'm serious. I could be playing chords that I've known for years. And if I ever think that I'm something special... I'll start jacking up chords like, what am I, what happened? You better listen to me, boy. That's what I hear him saying. There's times he said, do this. And I'm like, yes, sir. I've learned that now. But earlier on, he said, do this. And I, hey, this one sounds so much better here, God. This makes more sense for this song to be here. This makes more sense for me to do this one. 
He says, no, do what I told you to do. And if I try to do anything other than what he told me to do, okay, dummy. And normally I don't say dummy. Ivy will tell you, I don't say dummy or stupid. I don't let, allow our family to say that because I know the accuser of the brethren says that already enough. But seriously, in that situation, God's like, hey, knucklehead, you want to do that on your own? Okay, I'm not paying for that. I don't have resources for you there because you're outside of my obedience. And so now you're out there and you're sacrificing. <laughs> what are you sacrificing? You, your reputation, not going to be brought back, might lose your job, time lose your credibility, family. time with your family, as Ivy just said. So understand, it's, it's better to be obedient. Always better. Amen. Always now, I do want to share a certain scripture here, and we've heard this over and over, but if we could look at Matthew 8, verse 17 through 13. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss it? Verse 7 through 13. Oh, 17 through 13. I'm going backwards. Uh, um, Matthew 8, verse 7 through 13. You going to read it? Sure. sure. Okay. Um, this is the story of the centurion and, and um, his sick servant. And Jesus, in verse 7, and Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who, who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Mm -hmm. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Now, there's so much in there, I don't have time to get into it. But I do want to lift two levels of things in there of, as far as obedience and understanding order and uh, um, uh, protocol. Okay? So here you have this man who recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. He's the one who's able to get things done. He also recognized who he was in comparison to Jesus. He said, look, don't come to my house. I'm not even worthy that you'd step into it. He recognized his position to Jesus. Okay? That was very important because a lot of us, and I'm not saying us in here are doing this. I'm just saying at times people feel entitled or we feel that God, I'm God's chosen. And sometimes we really let that go to our head and think, I can approach God any old way I want to. No, no. Clearly, I'm really not worthy. Uh, you know, I'm going to put my head down. Jesus. Now, Jesus can say, no, nah, lift your head up. It's okay. But the truth of the matter, you got to recognize your ways are so much higher than my ways. I'm not even worthy to tie your shoes. Okay, so that's one piece, that centurion. But even still, that centurion had authority. He was a person in power. So he understood when I tell one to go, he goes. And when I tell him to come, he comes. I understand how it works. There gets to be a point where you're so confident that people who understand order are going to follow it because they understand they're stewards over that piece. Okay, so for me, there's some who would say to me and have said in times past, you should be a senior pastor somewhere. Okay, yeah, I've been in the ministry a long time. That don't matter. No. But guess what? That's my senior pastor. That's right. That's and right. when he tells me he wants something, I don't care if he puts a nice bow on it or anything. Right. I'm doing it. That's right. I mean, as long as it's scriptural. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm just doing it. Yeah. And some people might say, well, man, you've been in the ministry so long, you, you know what you, yeah, I know what I'm doing too. But I'm submitting to something that's bigger than me. Like I said about the state of Ohio, well, he represents God in my life, mm -hmm. right? Just like I'm supposed to represent God in my family's life, right? Okay, so that's one piece. I have to recognize that. So here you get the centurion who had power. He knows he could tell people to do thus or so, and he knows how it works, mm -hmm. 
He knows the workings of it. He also recognizes his position to Jesus, that Jesus, he's not even worthy that Jesus would come. But there's another level. He also understood that Jesus has so much authority that even spirits, sickness, or whatever would have to respond to him. He said, listen, man, all you've got to do is say the word. All you got to say the word. And I know every, obedience is set up on so many levels that even the devil had to go to Jesus, I mean, had to go to God and say, you take that barrier down around from uh, uh, J uh, Job. The devil had to go and request to have an audience to even mess with Job. So there's a whole structure set up, priorities and hierarchies that are set up that it has to happen. When Jesus says, go, the devil has to go. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. I know I'm kind of going further away, but I just That's want you so to know good. that obedience, if we operate under obedience... We will have access and faith or trust from God that he can use us in a powerful way. But if he has to worry about you going rogue all the time, then he has to withhold things. Amen? Amen. Amen. But Jesus was blown away by this man's faith because that's what was working for him to be able to say, look, I understand obedience. I understand authority. Yeah. I understand that even the uh, devils, the devil will obey you. I understand that sickness will go. I know you've caused the water. Now I know I'm, I'm expanding this. He didn't talk about the waters parting or anything like that, but think about the authority of God speaks and things obey. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's very important. Hallelujah. All right. So we have to model that as well. It's not okay for us to, st never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say never mind? Well, I, I could go into other places. I'm trying to get through this, but let's, let's just put it this way. Um, it's not okay to be at work and taking stuff. Right. It's not okay to decide even in your job that the boss said do thus or so, and you decide I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. Because even in that, that's disobedience. Mm -hmm. When your child rebels and does what they want to, they are causing things to come back up on them. And we're sowers. I shared this last time. We sow seed. And so when you sow disobedience, now you're wondering why you got this crop of disobedience and wonder why your children won't follow. I'm still talking about us being faithful servants and uh, uh, grabbing hold of all the victory and all the successes that God wants for us. Okay, I got to move on. So I'm going to move on to love. And I will, uh, this is the last piece I want to share, and then um, we will pray. But so listen, it's very important about love. And sometimes when we throw out the word love, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, love, love. Oh, I love this. I love that. I love my music. I love whatever. But we, I'm talking about agape love. Yeah. Not the type of love you have for your spouse. Not the type of love you have for a friend. Oh, here, let me clar clarify that. You should have agape love for your spouse or for, for everybody else. But I'm saying it's not that eros love where it's a, a, a romantic. It's not a phileo, which is a, uh, um, a, friend, a, 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 a friendship love. type of love. Yeah. It's agape love, which is not self-serving. It goes above and beyond, and it gives love unconditionally. Uh, un uh, Okay, so here, love will enable us to appreciate our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Okay, now, I want you to think about this because I, I wanted to pull out that word appreciate. I put that in there on purpose because appreciate means so much more. Yeah, it's bigger. Right now, when I'm doing finance, I do finances for the county, and there's times that we get uh, uh, equipment or assets that I can depreciate. And that means as time goes on, it loses value, and I'm able to write it off. I'm able to mark it down. And so it keeps devaluing. It's devaluing, okay? But really, if we love one another, like God, God is love, Everywhere God goes, he makes the environment, he makes the people better. And so when I say appreciate, it helps us, working out of that love helps us to appreciate and contact with means this. 
Ivy's value should increase because I'm with her. That means I should be building her up. You know, like your house. I don't, I don't want to act like she's property. But understand this. Your house, when you do things to it, you can cause your house to appreciate by keeping it up, uh, remodeling certain pieces. You know, there's things you can do. So later on, as time goes on, you should sell your house for more than you bought it for because normally property will appreciate depending on the area you live in. That's how we should be. Yes. So I think we need to ask ourselves, when I'm with someone, are the words I'm saying causing them to appreciate or increase in value? Mm -hmm. When they're telling you your, their vision or their hopes of what they think God wants to do, are your words words that will encourage them to pursue God and all that they have? And once they know for sure that's what God told them to do, are you reminding them that because God said it, he can do it? Are you telling them, I'm so happy. You know, I remember going to see Devin. I went to Devin's uh, graduation party. High school. Uh, oh, yeah. High, high, yeah, high, high school. school. That's what I meant. And I remember when he started doing school. And I like hearing, hey, well, how far you got to go? How much more? You can do that. You've got, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome to me to be able to look out at each of you and know that I have a relationship. And what I hope is that you are better off by knowing me. Because if I've ever said anything that tears down the vision or the mission that you have in life, I'm not loving you. Yes, 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 yes. When you're talking to me and I'm listening to you, do you have my full attention? And am I more so cutting down the things you say that you want to do? Or am I telling you that's not possible? Don't you know where you came from? You can't produce that. You can't do that. That's not God. God moves in love. And when he moves in love, it's beyond what he wants. I'm not going to even, even if, you, uh, if you're pursuing a job and I hear you got the job you want and here maybe I don't think I have the right job, I'm not going to be upset because you got an awesome job. I should say, awesome. That's I right. knew you could do it. That's right. God yeah. can do it. You know, I should be encouraging you. Yeah. That's what love looks like. Love that appreciates. Love that appreciates in a marriage means that you're not um, enamored by the shiny new thing walking in front of you because you know that what you have at home, what you've invested in, what you've sowed into, what you have appreciated, you know that that is better because it has, it's grown. Amen? Amen? So that adultery can't get in when you appreciate Mm -hmm. Adultery can't get in when your love is rooted in agape and not how good they look in them jeans. Mm -hmm. You hear what I say? Okay? Because um, adultery, is, adultery is at the door. Mm -hmm. It's at the door. With some people, its foot is inside the door. What are you appreciating? Mm -hmm. What is your love rooted in? Is it rooted in agape? Or is it rooted in the shiny and the fancy? Are you appreciating? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Amen? So we come against that right now in the name of Jesus. Yep, I see you. And we come against it right now yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. She gets feisty, doesn't she? Hallelujah. And I don't mean to belittle that, actually, because what's happening right there, if you don't notice, she's hearing. <laughs> and she's seeing. And she's attacking and I love that uh, because that's what we should do. We should do that. So listen, last thing I'm going to say is it's still part of the love piece where I said we got to appreciate, add value. We got to help. Is this scripture. If you're looking at things and you don't seem to be getting the breakthrough and you're looking and it seems like everybody else is getting the breakthrough. My gosh, they seem to be blessed. Over. God, win, win me. Think about this scripture right here. It's in Luke 16, 12. Oh, I know. This is actually the last piece, seriously. Yes, it is. <laughs> Most She's assuredly. over here showing me the clock. I know it's 12.02, but seriously, this is the last scripture, and we're going to be done. So this is the closing. So in Luke 16, 12, it says, And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, 
who shall give you that which is your own? Yeah. Now, wow. it still ties into love. And so I said, you add value to someone else that you come in contact with. So are you adding value or are you being faithful in that thing that is someone else's? That's why I said, even if you're at work, you know, you still have to be obedient. You know, you, I mean, it's not like you, well, I hear at church I'm obedient at work. I, no. no, it's all connected. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if I want God to give me my own, I'm going to have to conduct myself in a, the right way, a godly way, in that which is another man's. That's why I say, as I honor my pastor, later on, I should expect people to honor me. I don't do it for that reason, but I do it because God has placed this man in my life, and I have said, this is my headship here, right? If I honor our relationship, and you tell me something, and I hold your confidence, I'm a sower. I expect to reach people who are confidential when I'm sharing stuff. So it's a cyclical type of thing. It's going to continue to work. And it's all about us being successful. We've got to embrace godly character. And I know I'm speaking to the choir here. You guys are all on the same page. So anything you want to say in closing, babe? Um, yes. If you need prayer about anything that we have spoken about today, Otis and I, we are confidential. You have our confidence. And we will pray and minister to you. Amen. 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 All right. Well, listen, thank you guys for uh, listening to us. And you'll be back to Norm, the, the powerful. Of course, we could never replace the powerful word that comes from Amen. Pastor you, Rob. Lord. We missed you, brother. Justice. Uh, we are going to pray and that God will have his way with you the rest of this week. And you will just be do keep in mind, pray for those things. You're seeing these people, uh, uh, shootings, people losing their lives under the silliest situations. And uh, please keep those type of things in prayer. You can war for that, even if it's happening in another state, in another country, whatever. We need to be the church and warring against those type of things. So let's keep those things in mind too. Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your hand of mercy being on us and just loving us and uh, allowing us to celebrate you and celebrate each other and encourage each other, Father God. I thank you that you said we will have, you told jo uh, Joshua that he would have good success. And Father God, we want to have good success. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we just uh, embrace everything you spoke to us today, Father God, and uh, we trust you in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen.